This would be the first time we're taking Abby to a foreign country. We need our pasaportes. Route crosses international borders. Abby's going with us. It's real. It's genuine. Let's go to Canada, baby. Okay, I think we're almost at customs. I, we have nothing to be nervous about, but you know, crossing a border. And I've seen people have had trouble in the past. Oh, dude, this might take a minute. There is a whole big old line. This is what it looks like when you're trying to cross the border. Here's what's behind us. And here's what's ahead of us. Shouldn't take too long. The line seems to be going pretty well considering, you know, it's a border crossing. If you're driving across the Canadian border and you're fully vaccinated, you should be ready with the following. Proof of vaccination, digital or printed. Your passport. You should have completed the ArriveCan app within 72 hours of your visit. The app requires you to enter basic information as well as copies of your passport and proof of vaccination. Current registration on all vehicles, including any vehicle you may be towing. Cannabis is legal in Canada, but even if you're coming from a state where cannabis is also legal, you may not cross the border with it. Some firearms are permitted, so make sure you understand the law, link in description. If you're not vaccinated, there are additional requirements. The above is current as of September 22, but check the link in the description for any updates. And now we'll show you what happened when we tried to cross the border. Okay, I just realized that I had not completely figured, filled out this application, this online app thing that you need. It's called ArriveCan, and I thought it was done, but I went and I hit a button, it's like, oh no! And I thought, there's nothing to show these guys, but now it's actually done, I have this to show them. Hopefully there won't be any issue. Kinda stressed me out, because look how close we are. Your passport. Can you turn off your vehicle? Yep. Do you have the registration for this vehicle? Um, the back one? Oh. Or the, um, yeah, registration for this one here, and the other one. Oh. Dude, I don't know if I have that with me. I thought I was so ready. Didn't know you'd need registration. Here's the registration for the truck. Thank you very much. First of all, what brings you up here? How long are you guys up here for? Purpose of your trip. Are you meeting up with anyone here? How long is your entire vacation for? How long does it take for you to get back then? About two days. A lot of questions. Other than your clothing items, what else are you bringing up with you today? A little bit of food in the fridge, a portable hot tub we made out of a horse trough. Oh really? We, like inside? Inside the back, it's a toy hauler. And we have a rower for exercise, and we have an inflatable kayak. Anything to be left here? Do you own any firearms down in the US? What was the last time there was one in here? And what kind of gun was it? Where do you usually put it? If we take a look inside the vehicle, where are you? is there any magazine? Uh, any alcohol or tobacco? Any cannabis, any marijuana? We think you have a great trip. Thanks Thank very you. much. That's a relief. Okay, I started to get a little bit worried because she's like registered for the RV. I'm like, do you think I need that? I think it's at home. It's kind of funny, like border rangers, they're, they're all business, you know? They don't want you to be buddies with them. They're like, we're gonna ask you these probing questions and try to catch you on, you know, it's like, I got that in. I just forgot my registration, bro. And we are now in kilometers. How many kilometers per hour can I go? We're back in Iceland quick, driving. Quick translate. <laughs> We just turned down the wrong way down an aisle that's it's a one way you can't you can't get out so the only way is to back up through a very very tight very very sketchy rv park didn't know what i'd booked oh, careful on your on your driver's side is literally where you have like no space at all i know and then it's a stupid blue truck that's back here i've never been scared in an rv park before but this one. I'd like really rather sleep along the side of a road tonight than sleep in this place. It's, it's. So that didn't really end well. I didn't realize exactly what kind of a park this is. It's in a rougher section of town and we turned down a one-way street, which was the wrong street and had to back out. And after we got to the uh, end of the street, some guy pulled his truck over and kind of blocked us in, apparently intentionally. And then I had him try to move it. He punched it and gouged his truck on his fence. His wife is yelling, go get them! <laughs> He's like, are they gonna pay for it? We're, we're out of here as fast as we can get out of here. RV parks are kind of like neighborhoods and sometimes you get into a neighborhood and you just kind of want to run. We had, a, we had a rough night last night getting in here. Sometimes the pictures just look a lot better than reality. 
We had a whole day to kill in Vancouver before getting on the ferry to Vancouver Island, so after bailing on that scary RV park, we headed towards the beach. GPS took us through downtown Vancouver, and that was stressful. This place is stressing me out, man. This is about how I feel about driving in the city right now. I mean, this is the city, and then we're like driving in between electric buses and electric power lines above us for the buses and lanes ending and ah, dude. Wow, this is trafficy. Bus punches it to get around us. Oh, dude, this is terrifying. So far, Canada. I think we just came to the wrong place. There is literally nowhere to stop. We've been driving for probably an hour and a half, just trying to find somewhere to stop and navigate. We were gonna go to a beach, zero parking anywhere. Get me out of here, there's nowhere to go. I can barely turn anywhere. I'm losing my mind. This street is not made for RVs. Holy cow, we just barely made that turn without wiping out somebody's van. Just turned down a road, I have no idea if we can fit or if we'll ever be able to turn around. This is always freaking terrifying. I found a beach kind of near the ferry. Oh, it dear. always stresses me out that I see all these cars turning back around, which seems to me... Like, hey, we're full. This has become our best solution. We're excited to wait in the parking lot. It doesn't leave till seven. Am I okay to be here or do I need to go somewhere else? Our ferry wasn't supposed to leave till seven o'clock tonight, but we have nowhere to put this. There's nowhere to park a freaking RV anywhere remotely within a thousand miles of here. So if we have to sit in line till then, that's great. But honestly, we're we're on I'm happier now. than I've been all day long. I can hear seagulls. The ocean air is going through. We've been driving for almost four hours because we couldn't even stop. Get us out of Vancouver! Ah! The question is, will we make the four o'clock ferry or will we have to wait till seven? We're three hours early. Yeah. In the two years of plus of traveling, the low light of every low light occurred today between the RV park and trying to drive around this city. We are definitely in the hull of the boat. You can't be down here, so we got to go up. We don't get to play like we did last time. Ever wonder what it's like in the belly of a ferry down here with all the big vehicles? It's like this and it's really, really loud. We're gonna try level seven, the sun deck. Look at this. Buffet what? Lounge. Look at all this stuff. This is like a party. Shop. We're gonna explore this boat. Welcome to the sun deck on board the Heck if I know. Ferry to Victoria. This feels considerably bigger than the ship in Washington. Feels far down there, right? It is. A crew member may ask you to put on a life jacket. Here's how to do it. Right now we're navigating between the islands. Don't know the names of them, but it's kind of cool. We're getting really, really close. Glad, glad they know the waters. Be like, wow. yeah. I think we are the tallest and the longest non commercial vehicle in here. It's looking pretty good. I'm pretty sure we're not going to sink. When we're 10 feet out, this dude's going to jump it. You just watch me, I'm going to jump it. 10 not, meters not, He's not afraid. Monster bunny hop. People who are uh, maybe about 10 years older than me who were born in Victoria still speak with an English accent. So you may hear an English accent around and these people have never lived in England themselves. Wow. Right? So wow. it's a very, uh, very unique culture. Okay, dude. <laughs> Time to get that bunny hop. Get it. Go. Go. No way. He did it. When we get together, gonna be good. They've got this ferry thing really dialed in. I'm impressed. Well, we're at the RV park here on uh, Vancouver Island, and already are we gonna make that turn without wiping out this fence? Okay, I can sleep here tonight in peace. Oh, good, yay. Things were starting to get better, but then... Are you the captain? I am. Do you have any advice for us or anything important to say to the world? Yeah, don't piss me off. It's a good to see if the captain let me live during our search for killer whales in Canada, you're gonna to wanna to click right here. It's a good 